Jason Aiden on the core team. We're going to talk about packaging of Angular libraries. Let's start with what do application developers want uh, out, of, out of a library? Uh, an application developer would like to be able to npm install uh, your library and then uh, import your components into his application module. And when he goes to build his application, uh, the application developer would like, ideally, to be able to run ahead of time compilation and uh, get, get an optimized bundle for their app uh, that also supports tree shaking. So how do we produce the required assets? Um, basically, the first requirement is that you use the Angular compiler. So you get it by npm installing at Angular slash compiler CLI. Okay. In your uh, node modules bin directory, uh, you'll have uh, an ngc command. And that's basically a drop-in replacement for the TypeScript compiler. It essentially wraps the TypeScript compiler, adding some additional options, adding uh, additional output to support ahead of time compilation and uh, to support building the ng factory files, ng style files. So then let's look at the Angular compiler options. These are two of the uh, minimum uh, keys that we would recommend using. First, strict meta metadata emit. So what this does is it tells the Angular compiler to uh, halt, throw an error, when the metadata files that it would be generating would cause an error in an application, okay? So you pretty much always want to turn this on. It's optional, but uh, as an author, you, sh you should turn this on. You don't want to produce stuff that's just going to break. And skip template code gen. So what this does is it tells uh, Angular compiler not to generate the ng factory files. It tells it not to generate the ng style files. It will only generate the pieces that are actually required uh, for publishing your libraries. As a library, when you publish, you want to publish Angular and Rx and Zone as a, as a peer dependency, meaning that the application developer is responsible for choosing the version of Angular that he wants to use, he or she wants to use. So real quick summary on those things. Uh, we, want to be, we want to make sure that we are AOT ready. When we're publishing a library, we want to make sure that we are not stopping an application developer from uh, AOTing their application. We have to publish DTS files, and we have to publish metadata files. All right, but it can get better than that. We can do some optimizations. Uh, these optimizations, the strategy is really around, uh, the initial strategy is gonna be around taking all of these separate JavaScript files and uh, intelligently concatenating them into a single file. One thing we now recommend you do not do is what we call a kitchen sink ng module. The, the problem with that is that we want to avoid it because it completely breaks tree shaking. Quick note on library organization. Um, we're currently recommending an ng module per component. So rather than kitchen sink, just create one per component and export those from your library. What this allows us to do eventually is uh, enable tree shaking, okay, so that all, that all that code that's not actually used will be gone. Quick summary on that. So we want to ship ES2015 code, also ship ES5 code. If for legacy reasons you need to ship UMD bundles, that's okay. Uh, you would add it to the main key of your package JSON, um, but uh, we're kind of trying to get away from that on the Angular team. It's not really necessary for, for most of the modern tools. Um, go ahead and, and, and enable annotate for closure compiler. Uh, this will help, help your code to be, uh, um, help people to be able to do the best optimizations possible.